to discuss how to add a foundation field bus pack to a component and then how to add a transmitter or other new device. After logging into CMS, get latest of the component and then check it out and open it. Go online and make sure the copy you have is equal. Right click the cabinet and select add module. Under module redundancy, select hot backup. Then select the PFFA option and click Next. We are deselecting module required to ease in the download. Now, assign a PD tag. Well, we're going to use 2A1A because that's where it's located in the cabinet. In the next field for device ID, select the Browse button and select the ID for the pack at the first location. Select the Browse again and select the second ID. Next, select the correct hardware form of the pack type in the position in the rack. Select Next and then Finish. You will get a warning telling you that since you're adding the first pack of its type, a reboot will be required on the next download. This only occurs for the first and last pack added. You'll see that all the I.O. now goes red and in error due to the major difference you've created by adding the pack. Next, you will need to add a segment and a device. Expand the tree under the new PFFA card you've added and select the segment where you want to add the device. In this case, we're going to do it on the first segment. Right click and attach segment. Right click on the segment and select add H1 field device. When you do this, the add device wizard will pop up. Now you can select the device. In this case, we're using the 3051 and we're using a revision 8. If the device you're using does not appear here, then you have to add the DD file for it through the device manager. We will cover that in a different video. After selecting the device, select next. In this example, we're gonna put 3051 based on the device number, and then we're gonna give it a tag 3051 underscore PT underscore AI1. We'll then select next and finish. After selecting Finish, a new symbol for the device will appear in the work area. It's going to do a little bit of cleanup to align these devices. This cleanup has no functional purpose other than for it to just look cleaned up. Now we can expand the new segment and we'll find our new device container. Go and select the first analog input. We're going to rename this block tag to match the PD tag. We'll do that by calling it 3051 underscore PT underscore AI1. Since we're going to bring in both the sensor pressure and the sensor temperature, we'll do this for both AIs. We'll go to the software tab, right click the program from the tree view and we add a program called FFIO if one does not already exist. This is so we can keep our field bus IO in a dedicated program. After adding the FFIO program, we will right click on the newly created program and select add a special task, add a foundation field bus task. In this example, we will call it FFAI underscore pressure. Select a new task add rails to the sheet, which will transfer into manual layout mode, select the arrow tool, and then add an FFAI block. We'll then fill out the device name, the device suffix, and the description, and click OK. The block will show that it is unassigned. Right click on the block and select Assign. Then from the pop-up, select the device placeholder, AI input 1, and click OK. If done properly, the unassigned will change to the AI block name, in this case, 3051PTAI1. We can then drag the outputs to the rail. We're then going to repeat this for the second AI. After you've added these, if you want to change any details about them, you can go to the attributes for each block and modify the descriptions. The change won't take effect until you right-click and instance the FFAI. This will bring the attributes up to the variables for the device. We'll do the same on the other AI as well. We'll modify the description and change the device tag name. And as before, the changes won't take effect until we right-click and instance the attributes up to the variables.
We can now go back to the hardware tab, right click on the new device and put import an H1 template. This is where we have previously set up XML files with all the settings required for that device to work properly. We'll find the template we created looking at DP for a 3051S and we'll open that. Verify the import successful. If you don't have these import files created, you'll have to manually go through and set all the proper values based on the manual for the 3051. These files do not come as part of the Mark 6E. Now that you've verified or set all your values, you can now build and download. As you go to perform the download, you'll get warnings that none of the I.O. packs are available and that a reboot is required. This is only applicable if this is the first linking device you've added. Proceed with the download. Verify everything downloaded completely, and then you'll go to your status and wait for it to come back into a controlling status if it rebooted. Now, if the device is connected to the segment, it'll show up in decommissioned devices. Go to the segment where you added the new device and expand the decommissioned devices. Right-click the new device and select Clear. After it clears, close the window that popped up, right-click on the device, and select Commission. You'll get a wizard that opens, and you'll select the container that matches the device. Now select Finish, and the device will begin to commission. Close the window after it has finished commissioning and check to see if the device is now communicating. You'll know this by the green values you'll be reading from the device. You'll see the status is unequal, so you'll need to do another build and download. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul.